All right, so we're going to work to work through a new type of BCA chart problem uh, with limiting and excess reactants. This is from the textbook. Uh, it is 45, number 45B, uh, and you can find a scan of these on Schoology. So our information, let me go ahead and bring it up. It says for each of the following unbalanced uh, reactions, suppose exactly five grams of each reactant is taken. Determine which reactant is limiting and also determine what mass of excess reagent will remain after the limiting reactant is consumed. And we're actually going to go ahead and do the full BCA chart. So we're going to de determine how much excess reagent would remain. We're also going to figure out how much product is going to be produced. So we're looking at 45B here. All right, so first step would be to balance the equation. And looking at our elements, we've got calcium. We've got one here and one here. We've got two carbon, two carbon. We've got uh, two hydrogen. And over here, we would have two hydrogen here. And we would also to have two hydrogen here because this whole uh, hydroxide ion is doubled. So I'm going to need to get my hydrogen total to four um, to balance things out. So I'll go ahead and put a two here. Thank you. We just started going over a problem here. so. Um, so putting a two here gets me to four hydrogen, four hydrogen matches, and that also gives me two oxygen, but that's good because I'm, again, I'm doubling the OH hydroxide unit here, so I've got two oxygen. So that's actually all we need to do to balance it. I'm going to go ahead and write ones in front of each other material to get our uh, ratio for the reaction. All right, so next up, I want to do a before line, so B, a change line, C, and an after line, A. And the problem said we're going to start with 5 grams of each substance. So I'm going to go ahead and jot that down here. And of course, on our product side, we haven't done the reaction yet, so we don't have any mass yet. So we know that the change line should reflect the 1 to 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. Um, but we need to be in moles to, to apply that. So I do need to do the um, gram to moles conversion for the 5 grams here and here. So in order to do that, I need to figure out the molar masses of each. And I went ahead and copied each um, elements box from the periodic table so that we can do that. So for so for Ca C two, I'm going to add up forty point zero eight plus two times the molar mass of carbon, two times 12.01. That didn't go correctly. Let me try that again. There we go. It should be 64.10 grams per mole. I'm going to jot that down up here. And then I can use that grams per mole amount to convert in a moment. So I want to do the same thing for H2O. 
add up the individual molar masses. So 2 times 1.01 .01 would be 2.02 .02 plus 1 oxygen, 16. So that one's going to be 18.02 grams per mole. And then I need to do Ca CaOH2. And again, I do want to just remember here that I don't take the 2 into account here when I do the molar mass. I want the molar mass of water um, regardless of what coefficient is in front of it, right? We account for the 2 in the change line, so we wouldn't want to do that twice. All right, so back to this molar mass. So I have to be careful. I've got two hydrogen and two oxygen. So two times hydrogen's molar mass would be 2.02 .02 plus two times oxygen's molar mass is 32 and then just one calcium in the formula unit. So 40.08. All right, so my molar mass there is 74. Oops. 74.10 grams per mole. And then C2H2, two carbons would be 24.02. Two hydrogens would be 2.02. .02. Add those up. So 26.04 grams per mole here. Sorry, 26.04 grams per mole. All right, so I've got my molar masses. That's going to help me get between grams and moles. If I'm just starting with my CaC2, I've got 5 grams of CaH2. I need to get that converted to moles. So I want to end up in moles of CaH2. I want to cancel grams of CaH2. And for my conversion factor, I just need to get the number in the correct spot. So again, if the molar mass is 64.10 grams per mole, that means 64.10 grams in one mole. So the one goes here, and the 64.10 grams goes here. So what I'm really doing is taking 5 times 1 divided by 64.10. Let's do that. 5 times 1 is just 5, divided by 64.10. And I get a small decimal value, right? I would need 64 grams to have a single mole. I've only got 5, so I'm much, much less than 1. I'm going to keep three significant digits, so I'm going to record this as 0.0. .0. Eight zero moles. Going back to my calculator value, the leading zeros are not significant, so I would want to keep this digit, this digit, and this digit. I want to keep the zero to say that it is significant. All right. So in a nutshell, what we need to do is take the five grams and divide by the molar mass. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm not going to write out the full conversion because we're doing the same thing. We're going to divide 5, this time by a molar mass of 18.02. So 5 divided by 18.02 is 0.277. Again, I'm going to keep these three digits. The next digit is a 4, so I'm not going to round up. And I'll jot that down here. And of course, zero moles over here.
Okay, so my change line needs to involve these two uh, quantities being involved in the reaction. The 1 to 2 ratio tells me that I need to have twice as much moles of H2O to react compared to CaC2. I've got a lot less CaC2 quantity-wise, so it kind of makes sense that I'm going to have more than enough H2O to, to uh, react here. If you're unsure, I recommend just trying it, seeing how the ratios work out, and kind of going from there. So I'm going to assume, because this value is so much more, even though I need twice as much, that I'm going to react the entire 0 0.0780 moles of CaC2. Now the amount of H2O that's going to react should be twice as much because of the 1 to 2 ratio. So if I go 0 0.0780 times 2, I get 0 0.156. That's how much H2O is going to react. Okay. I've got more than enough, so that tells me that the H2O is going to be my excess reactant. My limiting reactant will be CaC2. So I'm just going to write lim above here for limiting, and then the letters excess to stand for the excess reactant. I've got more than I need. In terms of what's going to be produced on the right-hand side of the equation, we've got a 1 to 2 to 1 to 1 ratio. So those 1s should produce as much uh, as is reacted for CaC2. So that's going to produce 0 0.0780 moles. And again, that's the 1 to 1 link up here with the coefficients. And then same here. All right, so what am I left with? Well, this is going to go to 0 moles. I'll need to subtract here. I have more than will actually react. That's my excess reactant. So 0.277 minus 0.156 is 0 0.121 moles would be left. On my product side, I started with 0. I added this many moles. so. That's not so challenging. That's how many moles I will produce. All right, so we know what we end with, and we want to go ahead and do the last step, which would be to convert um, back to grams. That's how we would measure things in the lab. I'll move this down. So this is going to be 0, 0.00 grams. No, no big surprise there if it's 0 moles. I want to figure out what the gram amount would be here. So I've got um, 0 0.121 moles of H2O and now I want to convert from moles to grams using the molar mass that I calculated in one of the prior steps. It's 18.02 grams in one mole and that's exactly how I want to write the conversion factor. Moles would cancel. Just like here, grams canceled when I had the flipped sense of the conversion factor. So I'll take uh, 0.121 
times 18.02. And I get 2.180. I'm going to, whoops, didn't want to do that. I'm going to keep three digits. And in fact, for my gram amounts, since these ones went to two decimal places, I'm going to actually keep two decimal places. So that 2.18 grams, I'm going to write right below the mole amount, right here. So when this reaction runs, the CAC2 would be completely used up. Only some of the H2O would be used up. So we go from 5 grams to 2.18. And then we want to figure out what gram amount will be produced over here. Using the same idea here, I'm multiplying by the grams in one mole. So I'm not going to write out the conversion, but I want to take the mole amount multiplied by the grams per one mole. I will show it on the calculator. So the mole amount 0 0.0780 times the molar mass. And I'm going to call this 5.78 grams. I'm going to round up here because the next digit is a 9. That's how much CaOH2 I would expect to be produced. Same thing here. I'm going to take the mole amount times the grams per mole for C2H2. So again, it's 0 0.0780 moles times 26.04. And again, I'm going to keep three digits in two decimal places, so I'm going to call that 2.03 grams. Okay. So I want to do a conservation of mass check, remembering that I started with 5 grams plus 5 grams. So I started with 10 grams before. Jot that down here. 10 grams total. And when the reaction happens, I don't create atoms. I don't destroy atoms. They just get shuffled around into new compounds. Some of them don't change compounds, right? You have some water left over. So I should expect to be left with 10 grams total. And here we have to pay attention to, it's not just product that's left. I also have some unreacted H2O. So what I want to do for my mass conservation check is add up all of these and see, does it add up to 10? Okay. So again, go into my calculator. I'm going to take 2.18 plus 5.78. That's one of my product masses, plus the other product, 2.03. And I get 9.99. So I'm a hundredth of a gram off. That's just rounding error. So if I'm off that little bit, this is close enough to 10 that I'm confident I did the problem correctly. Right. So this process is really not new. Um, it's just throwing in this new idea of having potentially a limiting reactant. Um, and that limiting reactant is going to cause one of the reactants to have some leftover unreacted. We can still do the BCA chart in the same way. We can still do our mass conservation check.